feast of John Keeble, priest, Tractarian and poet, who died in 1866. Born in 1792, the son of a priest, John Keeble showed early brilliance as a scholar, becoming a fellow of Oriel College, Oxford, at the age of 19, a few years before his ordination. He won great praise for his collection of poems, The Christian Year, issued in 1827, and was elected Professor of Poetry in Oxford in 1831, a leader of the Tractarian movement which protested at the threats to the church from liberal developments in both politics and theology, he nevertheless did not seek preferment, and in 1836 became a parish priest near Winchester, a position he held until his death in 1866. He continued to write scholarly books and was praised for his character and spiritual counsel. Yet he is still best remembered for the Assize Sermon on National Apostasy, he preached in Oxford, considered by some the beginning of the Oxford movement, delivered on this day in the year 1833. And so as we meet for worship today, we give thanks that we are able to worship freely and openly, and pray in particular for all those who are persecuted for their faith or unable to worship in the open. We hear sung for us our opening hymn, The God of Abraham Praise. Please be seated. <coughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And all with you. As we prepare for worship, let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled as brothers and sisters in God's family. We come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image within us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to praise God together in the words of the Lord. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first speech. <coughs> reading is taken from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 6 and 9 to 12. <coughs> One day, while Moses was taking care of the sheep and goats of his father in Noah Gentro, the priest of Midian, he led the flock across the desert and came to Sinai, a holy mountain. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a flame coming from the middle of the bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but that it was not burning up. This is strange, he thought. Why isn't the bush burning up? I will go closer and see. When the Lord saw that Moses was coming closer, he called to him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, he answered. <coughs> Yes, here I am. God said, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals, because you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Moses covered his face, because he was afraid to look at God. I have indeed heard the cry of my people, and I see how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now I am sending you to the king of Egypt. 
so that you can lead my people out of his country. But Moses said to God, I am no one. How can I go to the king and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you, and when you bring the people out of Egypt, you will worship me on this mountain. That will be the proof that I have sent you. This is the word of the Lord. I praise the Lord. clergymen from Oxford. Their first meeting, however, you may know, was held not so far from here, in the gatehouse at Hadley. And so the Church of Hadley has a close connection to the Oxford movement as well. And that movement was about encouraging worship within the Church of England on what we would now call more Anglo-Catholic lines. Then it meant things like having candles on the altar at church. And later it came to mean wearing vestments like I'm wearing today. Not so long before Keeble was preaching, you could be tried for doing things like that and your ministry shut down. But Keeble encouraged people to worship and to worship openly and to worship emphatically, even in the face of what he saw was a country starting to decline from its Christian foundation. 
And so I thought I would read this extract from that sermon, because I think it does have some relevance today, especially as we hear this week of a confirmation that restrictions on gathering for public worship will be lifted from Monday. That means that we have been living under restrictions on gathering for public worship, legal restrictions, for the last 15 months or so. As I say, this was preached on the 14th of July, 1833. What are the symptoms by which one may judge most fairly whether or not a nation is becoming alienated from God and Christ. The case is at least possible of a nation, having for centuries acknowledged as an essential part of its theory of government that as a Christian nation she is also a part of Christ's church, and bound in all her legislation and policy by the fundamental rules of that church. The case is, I say, conceivable of a government and people so constituted deliberately throwing off the restraint which in many respects such a principle would impose on them, disavowing the principle itself, and that, on the plea that other states, as flourishing or more so in regard of wealth and dominion, do well enough without it. What should be the tenor of their conduct? who find themselves cast on such times of decay and danger. How may a man best reconcile his allegiance to God and his church with his duty to his country, that country which now by the supposition is fast becoming hostile to the church and cannot therefore long be the friend of God? Should it ever happen? which God avert, but we cannot shut our eyes to the danger, that the apostolic church should be forsaken, degraded, nay, trampled on and despoiled by the state and people of England. I cannot conceive of a kinder wish for her on the part of her most affectionate and dutiful children than that she may consistently act in the spirit of that most noble sentence of the prophet Samuel. God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. In speaking of the church, I mean, of course, the laity as well as the clergy in their three orders, the whole body of Christians united according to the will of Jesus Christ under the successors of the apostles. The church would, first of all, have to be constant in intercession. No despiteful usage, no persecution could warrant her in ceasing to pray, as did her first fathers and patterns, for the state and all who are in authority. That duty, once well and cordially performed, all other duties are secure. Second, remonstrance, calm, distinct and persevering, in public and in private, direct and indirect, by word, look and demeanour, is the unequivocal duty of every Christian, according to their opportunities, when the church's landmarks are being broken down. Finally, the surest way to uphold or restore our endangered church will be for each of her anxious children, in his own place and station, to resign himself more thoroughly to his God and Saviour in those duties, public and private, which are not immediately affected by the emergencies of the moment. The daily and hourly duties, I mean, of piety, purity, charity and justice. It will be no unworthy principle if any one be more circumspect in his behaviour, more watchful and fearful of themselves, 
more earnest in their petitions for spiritual aid, from a dread of disparaging the holy name of the English Church in her hour of peril by his own fault or negligence. People can preach in 1833 of the dangers to the English church. I haven't done the maths, but we're here almost 200 years later. Surely the message is stick at it, keep praying. The church, if it be God's will, will still be here in generations to come. stands to declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. He is near on his seat. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church. As we look towards the removal of restrictions on gathering for public worship next week, we give thanks that we have continued to worship and praise your name throughout this present pandemic. We give thanks that even in our darkest hours, your presence is known to us, not only as individuals, but as your body here on earth. We pray for the church as we emerge from this period, that we may be renewed in our mission and outreach, and renewed in our worship as we day by day and week by week come before you to bring the needs of this world to your altar. As we bring the needs of this world to the ear of your Son, Jesus Christ, Help us to remain firm in our faith that you are a God of rest and peace, that you are a God of justice and mercy. We remember places throughout the world who are unable to worship in public because of persecution and danger. We think of Christians in South India, Christians and Muslims in China, Muslims in Myanmar, Christians in North Africa. We pray for your whole church throughout the world. 
that we may be renewed and revived in your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, your hear our prayer. We pray for this country and for our leaders. For Boris Johnson, Prime Minister. For Sajid Javid, Secretary of State for Healthcare. And for Matt Hancock, our own MP. Keep them in your truth, O Lord, and instill in them a desire for justice and peace, a desire to see all people of this country flourish. We pray too for the Queen and the Royal Family. Giving thanks for their Christian witness and service. We pray for leaders in our local government. For Liz, Mayor of Haverhill, for our town council. as we see many events and activities planned throughout this summer, including the Join Up Day on Saturday, we give thanks for the community spirit here in this town, and pray for all those who are seeking a greater connection, a greater belonging, their place of living, of worship, of work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick at this time, in body, in mind, and in spirit. Remembering before you, O oh God, those who have asked for our prayers, we name them in our hearts. We think too of those who are unable to ask for prayer or help. But whose needs are known to you, O God. Strengthen us all with the knowledge of your presence with us and with the peace of your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have passed on from this earthly life. We pray for the recently departed, for those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time, and for all who remain on our hearts and in our minds. We pray too for those who have died alone, and who have none to pray for, Receive them into your kingdom, O God, and grant us a place with them when you raise us up at the last. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We join these and all our prayers with those of John Peeble, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and of all your saints and angels, commending ourselves and all for whom we pray the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
stands to share God's peace. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, that you may be kept safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace to those who are with us online as well. Do use the comments to share your word of peace. The offer tree hymn is sung for us. Give me joy in my heart. God of life, Saviour of the poor, receive all that we offer today with gratitude for your goodness, penitence for our pride, and dedication to your service. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning, 
and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, Renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and honour and, and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. Because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, Lord, you take, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.
us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Father, Father of all, we, we give you thanks and, and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I mentioned join up day in the prayers. That's run by the town council, and we're very much taking part here in church. So do come down on Saturday, if you wish, between 10.30 and 2.30. Uh, there'll be activities. Uh, for children and families on the market square for everybody here in church including bible journaling and a chance to find out more about what's going on of course join up day you are already joined up so if there are others you know of who might be interested in finding out more do let them know and bring your friends and family down there's plenty more on the Market Square as well of other community groups and organisations telling you what's going on. As we close our worship today, we hear some chorus, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs>
stand for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And all the with you. May the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its name strengthen you with his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.